You ever look at a car part and you see one water pump and it looks one way and the other one looks radically different? I mean, just crazy different. A lot of the things on a water pump are designed for a specific reason. I'm going to go over just some of them for fun. Um, this is on a 2005 uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. It's not an Evo or anything like that. It's just a 2 liter. But wow, what a funky little thing. Look at all those circles and look at all those little things and protrusions. What does it all mean? <laughs> you know, what's going on here? Well, everything on this water pump is the way that it is for a reason. The diameter is the way that it is so that it works well with the timing belt and the size of the pulley, you know, etc. For the same thing. The, uh, let's talk about like this protrusion right here. This is kind of an interesting one. Why does it have a thing sticking out right there? Is that, you know, to help it with the way that they were building it or what's the deal? What's this little uh, border doing on the side here? Uh, what is this for? What does this do? What is this? What is this? What is this? Well, let's go over a few of these. Let's start with this one. This one goes out here, and the reason why it goes down here is because the timing cover covers up right here. So this is like a little delivery tube or a little roadway, if you will, going from behind the seal uh, where the antifreeze is to the outside and down. The bearing to the water pump, if you look at it from the side, the water, or the antifreeze and coolant is on this side, and the torque drive is the timing belt on this side. Can't get antifreeze on the timing belt, or it'll soften it and cause it to fail prematurely. So what do you do? Um, say it's going to fail, eventually the seal will go bad. That's the first thing in the system to die on a water pump. You got your bearing, which is out here, and it's out here to keep it dry from the antifreeze, but in between is the seal. Well, if the seal fails, this is a drain. It's a drain passageway. See the hole in the end of it? So that if your water pump seal goes bad or your water pump leaks, it'll leak out there instead of getting into here and corrupting the bearing. If the bearing were to become corrupted, for example, in rust and seize this to where it just stopped, it would cause the timing belt to shred or break and it would cause damage to the engine. So this little guy's there to protect the engine. Let's talk about something else. What's this little bulge here? Why did they put a bulge with a hole next to the other one? Well, this is where the timing cover bolts on. As you remember, the timing cover runs right here. This is where it bolts on there. And then there's also another one up here where the timing cover bolts on. These are just afterthought add-ons to the design of this water pump. Let's talk about, and this one's the same thing. Another one goes on right there. But what about these little tabs? What are the tabs for? This is actually the reason why I'm making the video, is to show you what these are for. Um, there's one on this side, on one extreme, and then there's one on the other side, at this extreme. You could do a water pump. The most simple water pump design would be like a thermostat housing. It'd just be round, you know, to, to house the impeller blade and the pulley. And then you could just have one bolt here that holds it on and one bolt here that holds it on. But because there's all these stressors and these things bolting on, you have to have at least four bolts on this one. A very simple design would be three bolts. On like a Plymouth 3.0 uh, Grand Car Plymouth Grand Voyager, it'd be a Dodge Grand Caravan, same thing. They have a really simple water pump where it's like this but it bolts on and it's just got five bolts going around the outside. Um, these little tabs, there's one actually up here. Without further ado, let's show you how those work. Um, we're going to go underneath. What was that noise? It was my fancy stool. So anyway, you go up underneath of here, and Shirley Temple, there's the water pump. That's the old one that's in the car. And you can see this little tab right there. Well, these tabs are to enable you to um, pry the water pump back and get it to pop out and bleed. I didn't stage this because it would dump everywhere. But basically you get underneath of that little critter right there and you pry it up. And that way you chew on a non-critical surface. If you stick a screwdriver up underneath the rest of it, and you can now because it's already broken free a little bit. Once it goes a little, you can go the rest of the way. But if you were to put as much pressure somewhere else as I did here between the water pump and elsewhere, it would cause problems with the mating surface and you might have a leak there. So that's what that's for. Um, I think we covered about everything. But all of these things are all in concert, you know, to make the thing happen, make it work out. As far as being square up here, that's just a function again of the timing belt and the way that the timing belt goes on. 
I've got the cover right here, so let's show you what I mean. See that little, <laughs> if I can get it to balance and hold the camera, I feel like a amputee or something. You see the way that goes on there? And then the other upper cover has a thing that tags into that. But uh, it's pretty interesting. You know, the way that cars are designed, they're designed a lot just in layers. When you look at it, you're like, how could you possibly design that? Well, you just start with a circle and then add something onto the circle and then add another thing and so on. And that's how you get these funky organic looking shapes.